Hi. <laughs> okay. And hi, my name is Ayora. I'm from the Basque User Group, and I'm happy I have only three minutes because I'm so nervous. Okay, let's go. I'm going to talk. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to talk about our project, uh, Ikasi Ochorekin, Learn with Ocho or Learn with Wolfie. It's about comic strips for Chiquipedia. Uh, so, first of all, uh, I don't know if everybody or anybody here knows about Chiquipedia. Uh, Chiquipedia is uh, basically Wikipedia for children. That chiqui means small or little for that tiny humans, yes? And Pedia, you know what it is, so Chiquipedia. And Chiquipedia started uh, in 2018. Uh, it's in Basque, obviously. And we have uh, nearly 6,000 articles. And we have a lot to do. So uh, some months ago, we had an idea. And what if we add custom comics to the written part of Chiquipedia to make it more uh, colorful and uh, bright and for children, yes? So we started working with uh, Eñauta Yarzaguena, uh, an illustrator, and he created Ocho, Wolfie. Uh, we decide the English name right here, it's Wolfie. So uh, Ocho Wolfie is uh, the character that uh, explains to children the topics or the concepts or the ideas that uh, through comics. Yes, uh, we decide uh, with Enyaut and with some experts which topics do we want to um, work. Sometimes they are, they are uh, general knowledge, sometimes they are more local things. And we upload the comics to Commons, obviously. So here you have some examples. We uh, upload always two versions, one with text and one without text. So if uh, anybody wants to use it in uh, their language, you can do it. And here you can see one example, Amelia Earhart, I think. And that's it. We publish uh, two comics uh, every month and we're working on it. So uh, if anybody is interested in this, I also have the print versions of the comics, so we have more time. If you want to look closer, find me, ask me anything. I won't be so nervous when I'm there, so that's it. I'm going back and I'm going to say. Skerrikasko, thank you. And I forgot how to pronounce this. So, Palaban. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So the next one is actually Irvin's uh, video. Um, so I'm going to just, uh, where is it? Hello everyone. I Can you hear it? Oh, sorry. I am Irvin Santa Tomas and this is my presentation. No. I'm going to talk about our journey, learnings and our hopes and dreams. In 2009, we formed the Beagle Wikipedia community and had several initiatives, such as promoting all the project at conferences. Also utilizing this oh, information. Here it goes. Hello everyone, I am Erin Santa Tomas, and this is my presentation. I'm going to talk about our journey, learnings, and our hopes and dreams. In 2009, we formed the Beagle Wikipedia community and had several initiatives, such as promoting all the project at conferences. Also utilizing this information and media in publications. Networking with different individuals. We also conducted editing activities at the local municipal library. We network with Parasora People and Writers Organization and Wikimedia Philippines. In 2015, the PhilWiki Community User Group was formed. Our activities focus on advocacy. We network with teachers, 
writers and librarians collaborated with different affiliates, organizations, and even with the local government. And linkages with the academy in promoting our movement. So we learn about connections. It's not just about building partnership. It also means building trust. Establishing partnership takes a lot of time. And it's important to know the interests of our partners and work on common goals. And learn not to grab every opportunity. Be innovative and creative, not just editing, edit a ton. There are other ways to promote Wikimedia. Of course, the more the merrier. Our hope in this, we hope to establish wiki clubs, education programs, be able to sustain the activities and collaborate with more teachers. So here are some of our activities. So this was in 2008, I promoted to my students the project and 10 years later, we had an activity with their student at the Pico State College of Applied Science and Technology during the Wiki Loves Monuments. We had 11 years of the focusing on radio and local cable television. We had 10 years of partnership with Athenae Dinaga University. Another 10 years of partnership with University of Medical Hospitals. 10 years of outreach in different schools. Five years of advocacy at Central Victoria State University of Agriculture. 11 years of collaboration with public school teachers. Okay. Now I'll invite Jana. Dobro. Hi everyone. I will speak about the uh, Wiki collaborations with embassies, what we are doing in Glam Macedonia, in North Macedonia. Um, we started in uh, 2019 and it was uh, uh, with the uh, Hungarian embassy. Uh, started to collaboration uh, um, about uh, uh, creating articles uh, for the country. And, uh, the project we uh, called Beat uh, Hungary. So we had, I will go through the, through the photos first because three minutes are very <laughs> quick time to, to say everything. So uh, Mid Germany, we had three, uh, Mid Germany then in 2019 in May, uh, February 2021, Mid Russia. This is the ambassador of Ra Russian Federation in Macedonia. Um, this is uh, Mid Sweden, the ambassador of Sweden. She uh, gave the, the rewards to the best uh, participants. Then we have Mid uh, Serbia with the uh, most, uh, uh, the, the biggest number of uh, created articles for one month, uh, 1,206 articles. And the last one was Meet Italy. It was uh, in this March, from 1st to 31st uh, March 2023. 50 participants. We ended up with uh, 836 articles. Uh, we can see the Italian ambassador with the, with the uh, students, high school students who are the best participants. I am there on the photo also, and the coordinators the uh, teachers so uh, one minute i haven't even say anything about the photos okay so uh, the point is we need an embassy in macedonia uh, who want to collaborate in this kind of uh, uh, 
project. We need uh, trained Wikipedians, so we use Wiki Club's members, uh, high school students from high schools uh, in Macedonia, and uh, we need, um, um, I don't know, that's it. So the, the, the students, they created articles about the country, and um, at the end, the five, uh, the five uh, who are the best five, uh, are getting, uh, they get uh, the rewards from the embassy, from the ambassador of that country. And till now, we have a good collaboration with the embassies about this. So who wants to know more? Probably after the, on the, on the coffee break, we can talk about this. And thank you. Okay. Is Muhammad here with us? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, Thank you. This is the one, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So which one moves? Right. Just go to the projector. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Mohammed from Palestine, so I'm going to be presenting how I improved my students' editing, editing quality through following the techniques of data science and data analysis. So the most important thing here is data, data which is the gold of 21st century. Without data, I will not be able, I would not be able to solve the problem. So the challenge I faced that most of my students had relatively low editing quality, 6.3 out of 10, as you can see. And this equality is rated according to their uh, layout, the references that they added to the articles, and also the internal links and all these things. So I was able to identify that there is a problem in the training sessions I gave to the students. There is a problem in the educational resources. And I know this um, based on their feedback and based of the evaluation and the measurement process that I made. So in order to solve this problem, I used the techniques of data science. Um, there are main three key steps I followed. Collect data, analyze data, and modify the training sessions, the educational resources according to, the, according to your findings. And the whole process is called data-driven modification, data-driven enhancing, data-driven improving. So, Let's start first with data collection. We had a WhatsApp group where students asked the majority of their questions. More than 600 questions um, were asked on this group. So I gathered all the data from this group. And then using uh, Python and using Google Sheets, uh, Python specifically, what PY library, this is the code over there, I was able to sort, filter, and categorize the questions that they asked. And as you can see, these are, uh, these are their messages, but sorted in a Google Sheet. And as you can see here, this is, uh, it might not be uh, clear to you, but this is, um, each rectangle here represents the size, each, the size of these rectangles represents the volume engagement of each participant in the, in the group. So as you can see, Mehmet, or my name in Turkish, I'm the, I'm the only one. Um, or I, I can say that I sent the most of the messages and I uh, replied to most of the messages. So I was uh, uh, the most person who helped the students in the group. And I was able to identify also the most active students. Here is Abdul Rahim, here is Noor, and I uh, made, a, made a, like, a meeting with them and I, I asked them about the challenges that the students faced. By the way, isn't it nice? <laughs> yeah. So after collecting all this data, after al analyzing all this data, I adjusted the educational resources, I adjusted the training sessions based on the things that uh, students face challenges with. Are you ready to see the results? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So in the following edition, we had a bunch of new students, their editing quality increased to 8.7 from 6.3, and this is a 38% increase. Also, the number of their questions, as you can see, decreased from 600 to 184. So as you can see, um, 
uh, I succeeded in improving their equality by following uh, the techniques of data science. And for sure, this is not a one-step process. It's continuous, and we have always to collect data, analyze data, and modify our educational resources, modify our training sessions to meet the expectations of our audience to address the challenges that they are suffering from. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, do we have Matilda? She's here with us. Thank you. Uh, no, okay. okay. <laughs> if you want to use Thank this. You. Okay. So I'm Mathilde from uh, Wikimedia France, and I'm going to tell you why we promote the use of Wikidia instead of Wikipedia for our education program. Um, I'll uh, first uh, introduce, like, uh, explain this con like, the context of Wikidia in France. Uh, so Wikidia today is 2.5 million of uh, visits each month, uh, uh, 250 active editors, five, uh, 15 new articles every day, and almost 39,000 uh, articles. And uh, as you may know, Wikidia, uh, its m m main interest is its accessibility, meaning um, the um, the language is more it's easier for uh, for kids to uh, to be understood because it's mm, it's supposed to be accessible from eight years old. So uh, at Wikimedia France, we launched a survey uh, in uh, the summer uh, 2021, and we've had we've uh, gathered uh, 800 answers, and uh, we were able to understand to understand uh, the, um, the, the, the community, meaning the readers and the editors. Um, and they were rating the accessibility of the articles. So uh, as, I was, as I was telling you, uh, the, really the, the interest is that uh, it's supposed to be accessible from uh, eight years old. And this graphic shows that it is accessible. The blue part is um, is uh, really in important for for every um, every uh, ranges of age and uh, also for the for the teenagers. Also, the int like the the interesting part is that the um, survey showed that uh, the age uh, and well the age was actually matching the the age of the audience or the targeted audience. Um, and so we show we, we saw that uh, editors were actually actual uh, teenagers, um, majorly from uh, 14 to, to 18, but many many from 8 to 13, and uh, it showed also that uh, girls were were well they were here uh, they're present they're editors, and uh, there may also be a. a like some bias about like who um, who answers service, but like we were really happy to see that on Wikidia it's a lot of uh, girls too. And so um, what uh, what it's uh, telling it well what what it tells also about Wikidia is that if we have more uh, teenagers on the on the encyclopedia, it means that it's also like people who just started. Uh, with editing, so it means that the community is mo most most likely to uh, to be welcoming, and this is also what this graphic shows uh, that majorly uh, the community is quite happy with how the way they have been welcomed on uh, on the encyclopedia. So all all of these reasons to to use Wikidia as. Uh, as a teaching tool for our education program. And um, well, that's an invitation for you guys also to use it. And it exists in uh, 16 languages. And uh, that's all. <laughs> I wanted to stay with the time. Thank you. And Zico, please join us.
Okay. Hello, can you understand me? Oh, too loud? Like this? Thank you. In a Wikipedia course, I made my students unhappy, and I'm proud of it. As I visited schools, universities, and museums, I couldn't help but notice that I needed a solid theoretical background. So I dived into further studies and applied my newfound knowledge to wikis and Wikipedia, which led to the creation of my book, which I forget to take with me, but on my user page you can find the link. Picture this, a typical Wikipedia course at a university. Two students are supposed to, to write one article together. But in reality, they divide the work, and when they are ready with their parts, then they bring it all together, click off a button, article delivered, nice. But they do that all the time. What have they really learned about collaborative writing? To tackle this issue, I delved into the literature and developed a scale with different levels of collaboration. I also pondered why people shy away from collaborative writing. It turns out we humans have this deep attachment to our own words. We take pride in our accomplishments, ask for recognitions, and hold a sense of responsibility. It's not easy to accept that others are tinkering with our texts. You might think that the students are simply too immature or that it is just a symptom of evil capitalistic copyright thinking. But let's be honest, it's not just the students, not just the students who avoid collaboration. collaboration. Even your friendly neighborhood Wikipedians they prefer submitting fully polished texts to avoid that others interfere during the writing process. So how do we encourage collaborative writing in the classroom? Let me share an experience. I once assigned students to write articles for a German wiki encyclopedia. These university students formed groups and they had to research specific topics and then I had other groups compose articles on that basis, so etc. So I aimed to encourage collaboration by breaking down the writing process and then divide it again and again. What did the students think of this approach? That was awesome. No, of course not. In the final discussion, it was obvious that they were deeply dissatisfied. They wanted to keep working on their own texts to the end. So I probed deeper. And I asked them, why didn't they help each other more? And what if they had worked under a pseudonym? Would it have then be easier to correct their fellow students' texts? So the gears in their minds started to turn, and they began to really grasp the purpose of the training. So this is an example how my exploration of uh, wiki theory has transformed my approach to teaching Wikipedia. But now you ask, but Zico, how did you make your students happy again? Stroopwafels. Oh. <laughs> so, an old tradition. Thank you very much. Have a nice conference. <laughs> At the table there. <laughs> thank you, Zico. Um, thank you all for your presentations, um, and now we will have a break until four, so please uh, feel free to use these cookies. <laughs> and see you at four. <laughs>